Well, automation is something that is a buzzword right now. And as you can see, there is a UR robot right behind Craig and I. But how easy are they really to learn? Now, Craig is an intern and he's studying at Georgia Tech. Go ACC, by the way, Tar Heel fan, if you can't tell by my suit, but from Georgia Tech. And he is an intern for only a few months. So we're gonna discuss how easy it was for him to learn and program the cell that's behind him. Yes, he programmed the one behind me right now. And then on top of that, we actually have four cells we're gonna showcase with you today with my buddy Craig. So with that being said, let's talk to my buddy Craig. Craig, how are you my friend? Doing well. Excellent. Yeah. Even well on camera with the record button on, right? Yes. Working You're a young it. man. You're ready for this. You're yeah. built for this. So Georgia Tech, an intern now with Allendale. Let's talk about the Cobot setup behind you. How easy was it really? Yeah, it was just, I mean, it took me like 30 minutes. I'd say I started here about a few weeks ago and within the first week I was starting programming robots like the one you'll see later. And it was rough in the beginning, but in reality, it's just practice and it's not like a language. It's just a command tree, you plug in place. So it's, I mean, the learning curve is you know, days. Well, let me ask you a question, Craig, because there's this thing that all of the older guys like myself keep throwing out there because we have a skills gap. We go, get the kids in the automation. It's more like a video game and more fun. We say it all the time. Do you have a connection to the automation side more than the CNC side, or do you like all of manufacturing? I'm just trying to gather your perspective because I use it all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll say I do a lot. I mean, a lot of the stuff that I've done in the past has been more uh, manufacturing based. So I can weld, machine, fabricate, and something that I love to do in my free time. And it's also something I do in my degree. But automation, I've been doing since high school with um, like Lego Robotics and FIRST Robotics as well. So I've been doing stuff like that, but this is a completely different you know, robot to program. And it's much more fun, honestly, to see it being used in real world applications that is sometimes hard to get to in a school setting. That's a pretty cool explanation. I like that a lot. And it's, it's nice to hear you say that I'm enjoying this more and I love Lego Robotics to be fair. Now with that being said, and you set this up and it was fairly easy, we're just more or less moving packages currently, which in my opinion, as I get older, it's because of my back, right? But there's more applications to this, isn't there? Yes. I mean, this robot behind me, it can do, with the vacuum grippers, it can do box, it can do plate metal, We've had it pick up a sheet of aluminum about you know three feet by two feet wide, and it just picks it up with ease, places it wherever you want it to go. So yeah, it definitely saved your back. You said 35 pounds? Correct. That's more than I can bench. <laughs> so with that being said, this is not the only cell you've set up. You have another no. one we'd like to show to Correct. the audience as well, right? right? There, yeah. Well, let's take a look. Well, now that we've moved to this next cell, Craig, what are we actually working on here? What's going on with this cobot? Yeah, so this one is equipped with a vision system. So it's actually going to see if I place these on this pink mat here, it's going to look for it and notice it's going to actually going to look for a ring. It's going to look for the top view and it's going to pick that up and it's kind of emulating how it would work with the Haas mill. And so we've got the robot picking it up and putting it in a vise within this mill setting and then closing the door. It's then going to wait for something to happen, some kind of milling process, go in, pick it up and then palletize it down here. Now obviously we're taking a look at this right now and we're going with the ID instead of OD, but Theoretically, with a change of grippers, we can pick up any material, right? Correct. These grippers just didn't have enough space to actually grab the outside of it, which is why we chose the inside. But with any different type of gripper, either custom or already manufactured, you can pick up whatever you want. Well, thank you for being a part of this industry. Good luck at Georgia Tech. Thank you for hopping on camera with me. But now we're going to go see Alec. Awesome. Thank you. Well, here we are with my friend Alec again, and this is automation setup number three, and Alex set this one up. It looks like it's just sorting, but maybe it's more complicated than that. Alec, is there more to it than what's going on? Yeah, so this one's actually using a vision system to identify these two different parts as objects and then sort them accordingly. How many different parts could I put on here in theory and it could find it? In theory, you can put on as many parts as you have space for. And you program this one as well, right? Yes. And how long did it take you? These don't take very long to program. It's a matter of setting a snapshot, like your field, that's where it's gonna be looking for parts, and then each part is its own separate snapshot. That's where you identify what it is, and it'll search for them accordingly. That's pretty clever, I gotta be honest. It is, it's a very cool system. It is a cool system, but we have one more to look at today as well, don't we? And you set that one up also. Uh, so that one was kind of a team effort. 
a team effort. We love teams, right? There's no I in team, but I hear there's a me. But don't worry about that. Kobe said that. Rest his soul. All right, let's go check out this fourth one. Well, Alec, standing on camera with you right now in front of these Cobots is pretty awesome because I also see a tank and an American flag. However, don't let me get confused with what's going on and start talking about everything. Let's focus on what's happening here. We have two robots working together. You mentioned you didn't do this one on your own. This was a team effort, and these are working as a team. Yep. Yeah, so uh, this was kind of an all-hands-on-deck thing. It's something that we were kind of new to with the Dorner conveyors, but it's very cool technology, and we were excited to do something with it all. So you said this was new for you, so now you know I have to ask, how easy was it? Uh, not too bad. So with the Dorner conveyors, like the whole setup, it's a matter of just unplugging all of your IOs from inside of the panel for the UR and plugging everything in. So you don't have to do any of the wiring yourself. No kidding. This goes back to my conversation with Craig where we were talking about uh, picking up from the ID a piece, putting it into a vice, and then maybe adding another cobot to take that vice and then put it into the machine like you guys have set up out in the shop. Yep. It's uh, basically the same thing. This one's just a little bit more moving parts. Do you like working in the world of cobots? Do you find that exciting? Oh, yeah. It's always something new. No two robots are doing the same exact thing. It's kind of get to figure out a little math, or not necessarily a math problem, but a little problem every time. I like it. Well guys, this is automation. These are four different cells from packaging to pickup to figuring out what a part looks like and separating them to what you see here working together and the conveyor belts. But I can only imagine how much more is out there. So let's stay in touch with my buddy Alec here. Let's stay in touch with Craig. Let's see what they're going to do in the next few years because as you can see, Alec is fairly new to this and Craig is at an internship from Georgia Tech. So let's follow them on their journey and get them back on MTD per your request. Leave it in the comments. We'd love to hear from you, Alec. Thank you again for hopping on camera with me. You're amazing. No problem. It's my pleasure.